What's going on my curious bunch of health fanatics? Welcome back to the channel. Today we embark on a fascinating journey into what biomarkers are associated with cognitive decline. This is super simple science that is worth knowing for your anti-aging toolkit. I'm gonna to talk to you about what your doctor would most likely be testing for in blood tests and how you can manage those blood biomarkers and other facets for your health to make sure you are more resistant to the onset of cognitive decline and can remain mentally sharp for much longer. But first, a big thank you to YouTube and Google for such a great platform and a quick message to the Google moderators. We are not selling any product or service. We are simply sharing the latest health science news. So let's jump in. Blood biomarkers such as homocysteine have become essential tools in detecting cognitive decline, including Alzheimer's. Homocysteine is an amino acid found in the blood and elevated levels have been associated with an increased risk of neurodegenerative diseases. Researchers believe that high homocysteine may damage blood vessels in the brain and lead to cognitive impairment over time. A simple blood test can measure homocysteine levels by enabling medical professionals to assess a person's risk for cognitive decline. However, it's important to remember that elevated homocysteine alone does not confirm the presence of cognitive decline. It's just one piece of the puzzle. So in addition to homocysteine, other blood markers like C-reactive protein, aka CRP, and brain-derived nootropic factor, aka BDNF, are being studied in relation to cognitive decline. CRP is a marker of inflammation, and chronic inflammation in the brain has been linked to increased risk of cognitive impairment. On the other hand, BDNF is a protein that plays a crucial role in promoting brain cell growth and function. Low levels of BDNF have been associated with cognitive decline and the development of neurodegenerative diseases. A 2019 paper shows that exercise and a lower carb diet can raise BDNF. Now that we understand the significance of blood markers in detecting cognitive decline, let's explore how we can lower homocysteine levels by adopting a few simple lifestyle changes. Consuming a diet rich in folate, vitamin B6 and vitamin B12 can help lower homocysteine levels. These nutrients can be found in leafy greens, nuts, seeds, legumes, and fortified cereals. You can also, of course, take vitamin supplements if your diet is lacking as well. Engaging in regular physical activity has been shown to reduce homocysteine levels and improve overall brain health, whereas chronic stress can elevate homocysteine levels. So either remove or limit people from your life that are either troublesome or what we call energy sucking vampires. We've all met these people and so you have the right to be surrounded by great people. Practicing relaxation techniques such as meditation, yoga or deep breathing can also be beneficial. Of course, smoking and excessive alcohol consumption can raise homocysteine levels. So quit smoking or try and at least smoke less and moderating alcohol intake can be very helpful. A 2013 paper found a strong correlation between animal proteins and elevated homocysteines. The paper said, and I quote, high animal protein diet was positively associated with high total homocysteine concentrations, whereas a plant protein diet was inversely associated with total, total homocysteine concentrations, end quote. So consider plant protein if cognitive decline runs in your family. In addition to homocysteine, there are other factors that may induce cognitive decline. These uh, include high blood pressure as uncontrolled hypertension can damage blood vessels in the brain and increase the risk of cognitive decline. Diabetes, people with diabetes are at a higher risk of cognitive impairment due to the impact of high blood sugar levels on brain health. Sedentary lifestyle, well, a lack of a physical activity can negatively affect brain function and increase the risk of cognitive decline. Poor sleep is another factor. So chronic sleep deprivation can impair cognitive abilities and contribute to cognitive decline over time. And of course, not getting good sleep after exercise is also a huge risk factor. I'll link to another video here about that shortly. And one more piece of data worth sharing. Olive oil 
Having more than half a tablespoon of olive oil per day was associated with a 20% lower risk of dying from dementia when compared to those that didn't consume olive oil. This is probably why the Mediterranean diet holds health benefits. This doesn't mean you should consume olive oil excessively. Just a simple daily dose is enough. Remember, biochemistry doesn't always work where more is better. There is usually a sweet spot and half a tablespoon seems to be fine, but excessive consumption could hold detrimental effects and overconsumption of things rarely has benefits in biology. When digging down into this data, olive oil contains something called oleic acid, which is a potent CERT6 activator. CERT6 is part of the gene family of sirtuins, which some scientists believe are longevity genes worth activating. I personally need more data for that conclusion, but either way, activating CERT6 does appear beneficial. I'm dropping more videos in the coming days, so please hit that notification and that thumbs up button. It's a huge help. Always chat with your doctor about health data you see online. Don't forget to grab a copy of my book, The Anti-Aging Toolkit, second edition out now. Hit that thumbs up button, fist bump the subscribe button, or face the consequences of your actions. Visit me at www.scienceofaging.life and as always, stay young and stay vibrant.